Hello, are you ready to hear more exciting adventures about Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends, written by Christopher Audrey? These stories were taken from the book Thomas and the Fat Controller's Engines, and our first story is called Bird Strike. I know what a Jubilee is, announced Henry. It's an engine called Bahamas. I met him at Crewe. Isn't it a sort of party? asked Percy. Thomas and I took some scouts to one once. That was a jamboree, put in Thomas with a chuckle. Oh, was it? said Percy. Sorry. Gordon smiled. Actually, it's a train, he said knowingly. Flying Scotsman told me. The Silver Jubilee used to run from London in the old days. But we're not London, objected Henry. And if it's a train, why do we need it? James continued. We don't, interrupted a well-known voice. Our jubilee is a golden one, because in 1995 it is 50 years since stories about us began to be in books. I thought it would be a good idea to celebrate. It is a party, squeaked Percy excitedly. The fat controller laughed. Sort of, Percy, he agreed. I haven't worked out the details yet but you will all know about it in plenty of time. The engines were excited. Will there be a special train? Gordon asked the back controller. Can I pull it, please, sir? Sorry, Gordon, said the back controller. There will be a special train, but I can't spare you, I'm afraid. Anyway, haven't you forgotten how you had coal and water problems on the other railway? Gordon had. You remember Pip and Emma, though? Don't you, Gordon? The fat controller went on. I have asked them to be my special train for the guests from London. Gordon puffed away. Near Henry's tunnel, the main line passed through woodlands and the high branches of the trees were full of birds' nests. Often great flocks of birds circled above the railway and sometimes Gordon had noticed them feeding in the fields nearby. Today, the birds were much closer to the railway than usual. Poop! Poop! whistled Gordon as he approached the farm crossing. Startled, the birds rose together in a thick black cloud. They swooped across the line in front of the train. One bird, larger than the others, had been perched on the gatepost beside the line. It flew so close to Gordon that its wings almost brushed his nose. As it did, so there was a bump, and Gordon felt his brakes come on. Why are we stopping? Gordon asked his driver. Perhaps someone had pulled the emergency brake, said his driver. Don't worry, the guard will come and tell us in a minute. But the guard had no idea what was wrong. There must be a leak in the brake pipe, said the fireman. He inspected the pipe from one end of the train to the other but he could find nothing wrong. I can't understand it, said the driver, scratching his head. There's no leak anywhere, yet the brakes are hard on. It was just when those birds flew across, said Gordon. One nearly hit me, and there was a bump. Just a minute, interrupted the fireman. He looked quickly at Gordon's front brake pipe. There you are, he said triumphantly. The fireman laughed. That bird knocked a seal out of your brake pipe, he explained. Look. Well, I'm blessed, said the driver. I've never heard of the bird strike of the steam engine before. A crow did it on the Great Western in 1915, chuckled the fireman. I read about it only last week. Gordon was soon on his way again. The other engines laughed. Poor old Gordon, they chuckled to each other. Fancy being stopped by a bird. There's nothing to crow about, is it? <laughs>